concert. It just sparkles and makes us feel good. So welcome to Vienna. That's, that's where we're going to be for the next hour or so. And we started then in with where the piano trio really started in the late 1700s with Mozart. And we go on to Beethoven and Schubert and um, good old maestro Haydn and then we added a couple of modern things in. Um, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But first, I'll tell you that we are the Essex Piano Trio, as you know from your program. We've been playing together, I think, the, since 2017, is it? And we, we like one another. <laughs> that, that's a good reason to play together, isn't it? And we found that we have a lot of musical ideals in common, and we just like to work at playing beautiful music and sharing it. So that's why we're here. Uh, so now to tell you a little bit our about our program, we call these conversations among friends. And the conversation with the, with the piano trio means that all three of us have a voice. And you can hear that very separately. You know, they speak sometimes, Ashley speaks sometimes, I speak a lot, but sometimes I have a solo and sometimes, I, you know, so we trade off and that's what it's about. But our conversation extends, ah, amazing. To, to you as well, because you are a part of the adventure that we have together and the learning that we do about the music and the sharing. Because why play a program if it doesn't have some kind of meaning or some kind of logic? So that's who we are. So we have our, our classical giants that we're playing for you today, but we're also doing a couple of now moments. Living composers paired with one of the composers that, that you will hear. So you just heard the Mozart, and I'm going to play you just a tiny scrap of another piece of Mozart and explain why I'm doing it. Typical Mozart, isn't it? Piano Sonata that he wrote, the second piano sonata. So, Mr. Pert, who is still alive, took that sonata movement and wrote a tribute to a friend who had died. And he, his friend was a violinist who loved Mozart, so he used Mozart as the basis. So, this sonata gets fragmented get to hear little bits of it as the piece goes along. We also get to hear some wrong notes occasionally. Not wrong notes, but notes that go against the grain a little bit, because that's what they do. Uh, that's what dissonance does. And so this piece is built of silences. You'll hear big holes in the music occasionally. In fact, the first four or I think for six chords that the guys play here are alone and they just kind of stop. If 
you remember the measures I just played for you, as if they were going on underneath it, that makes sense. Um, and so there's silence and dissonance, but there's a real feeling of love and of reflectiveness. So a chance to reflect, a chance, a chance to just think about someone maybe who's lost. That's what this piece is about. So the pairing then of the two Mozart pieces to be here. So Mozart Adagio by Argo Pair.
we're going to meet Pei Chok, who is 25 years old, Indiana. Mozart has died about four years before, and Beethoven, at the age of 25, is coming on the scene as a brash and brusque and brilliant, brilliant young man, pianist and composer. So he has written three piano trios, and we're going to play one small movement from one of them. Um, at this performance, Haydn, the grand master, was in attendance. And Haydn liked this movement that we're going to play for you. In fact, he liked all of them, particularly this. And we think that it was because it sounds an awful lot like a piece of Haydn you're going to hear later. But this is just the trio then from his second or the finale movement. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. From um, his second piano trio. And we call it the chicken. And I think you'll see why. See if you like it. Thank you. Thank you. 
like that one? Yes. One or two is better. Okay, so our problem tells you that, the, that we've designed this as sort of a three-course meal. So you just had your salad and your appetizer. Okay. The piece that is to come is the big old hearty main course. Um, and then we have a little dessert at the end. But this piece is by Schubert, who idolized Beethoven. Absolutely idolized him. We don't know if he ever actually met him, but you know, Schubert and Beethoven, they're, they're the kings, right? And Schubert loved Beethoven so much that he actually was a pallbearer at his funeral. And he asked if he could please be buried next to, wait, did I say that right, Beethoven? Point to the mic. This way. The mic. Point to my camera. Yeah. <laughs> Is it going to work now? Yeah. Good. Put you in charge. <laughs> All right. So, Schubert loved Beethoven. He was a pallbearer at the funeral. He asked to be buried beside Beethoven. Got that. Now, so the sad thing is that Schubert was a very young man, but was dying. And so a few months after Beethoven died, and just probably just months before he died himself, he wrote this gorgeous, gorgeous Opus 99 trio. And there is not a sad note in it. There is so much joy and so much optimism, and I think it's going to make you happy. I do. Um, so there are four movements, four sections. It's about 40 minutes, so just settle in and enjoy them. A fast, a slow, uh, a little scared so that's kind of called a joke. Well, the joke is on us usually, because that's where the composer puts all his nasty little tricks. And then a, a wonderful dance-like little finale. So it's a big piece. It's a gorgeous piece. And one of, one of the prettiest we've ever played, I think. So we hope you will love it. This is the Schubert Trio, Opus 99. <laughs>
Thank you.
everybody has earned the right to just stand up and stretch for a second. Everybody. <laughs> That's what they call a long song. <laughs> but it sure is fun. Uh, so thank you for being patient with us and for seeming to enjoy it. Thank you. Um, so we're at dessert. We are at dessert. Seven minutes left in the program. We'll see. Um, so we've come back to that now. We're going to introduce a composer of our very own. And is it still not working? There. There. Before. <laughs> All right, thank you. We have come to the now part with an American composer who's still alive. And a composer that actually I met and hosted um, at a conference for a couple of days, and it sure was fun because he just has an amazing sense of humor. Just a marvelous guy. So Mr. Bolcom set out to write this piece as a remembrance of the death of Haydn 200 years before. So it's not a sad, somber piece like the, the lament that we had earlier. This one's much more cheerful, much more tongue-in-cheek. And if you know anything about Haydn, you know that he just really liked to have fun. There were surprises and weird little things all in his music just for the sheer fun of it. So we decided to do um, a little bit of a joke ourselves. So we're going to play the first part of Mr. Bolton's piece, his introduction. But we're going to place, replace his rondo with Haydn's most famous Turkish rondo. The, the movement that was from the end of his first trio, the one that Beethoven probably snitched a little bit of that you heard earlier. And so we're putting these together as one piece. It'll take a second to turn pages between, but, but we plan to go on and get you out of here in another seven minutes. Thank you. 
Thank you.